Hey everyone, Kerr the Artist here. I am here as always with my lovely co-host, Mr. O.R. Ash. It's me and this boo sheet. It's a ghost. I couldn't think of anything. All right, so. I hope you have a good weekend. <laughs> and as always, keep it fizzy. So as you can see, we got another tier list here. If you haven't seen our first tier list video, we went through all of the Canon Ben 10 aliens and just you know, went through it, gave our opinions on it, ranked them from best to worst. We got another tier list right here. I'm gonna link the tier list below in the description if you'd like to make your own. And this time we're looking at Ben 10 villains. Uh, it seems like the way this one's set up, it's just ultimate to worst, but you know, it's still pretty much A, B, C, D. How would you like to rank this, Ryan? You wanna rank it on like, you know, which one we agree with <laughs> the most? Ooh. Or like, who's the best? People got mad at us with the last one of these we did that we did on our own opinion. I still kind of feel like we should do our own opinion though, just cause like, yeah, just just we'll throw them wherever. We're gonna keep the format very loose. We're just putting them where we feel like. It's more about, you know, talking about the villains. This isn't like a definitive, like this villain is better than this one. Because there are multiple iterations of some of these villains, we're gonna go with like general consensus of what we agree upon with the villain. Like for instance, Vilgax, there are technically in my brain, four different versions of him, three of which I don't like. We're throwing shade already. <laughs> I'm just saying. I, I feel like that's valid because Kevin's on this list too. So we're accounting for his his childhood villain arc as well. Even though it's ultimate Kevin artwork. Yeah, the artwork uh, does not reflect, like it looks like we got reboot 6-6 six, six in here. We're, we're gonna be talking about the original series 6-6. Uh, six, six. I'm sure the, the person who threw this tier list together was just looking for images. I'm sure y'all get it. So let's just jump right into it. So speaking of Vilgax, the first one we have on this list is Vilgax. Might as well start with a banger. So let, let's let's talk about Vilgax. Okay, if I if I were to because again, taking into account every version of him, only as far as like weighing it against other villains that are on this list, I would put him in excellent. Not quite ultimate, because again, there's some pretty crappy versions of him. Original series, I find very threatening, very cool, very scary, like legitimately scary. I actually think one of the things that makes Vilgax a stronger character is the fact that he doesn't need to have such an extensive backstory. He doesn't need to have like this complicated motivation. He's literally just this force of evil, but at least to me, he doesn't really feel empty. His whole character is completely being the force against Ben. I never think he feels flat or at least not to a point where that's my first thought with Vilgax. I still think he's relatively an interesting character. There are some downsides to him, you know, the alien force Vilgax was a bit tricky to get used to. Dad Dragon Gax. I don't even know how I feel about him, honestly. I kind of just like blocked that out of my mind. Omniverse Vilgax tried to bring things return to form, but you know, sometimes Vilgax is so serious, he blows up the multiverse, and then other times he's running away from Mob Riedel. So he's <laughs> he's a big hit or miss, but yeah, I agree. Excellent. Vilgax, he's, he's just interesting. I feel like that's enough to put him at excellence. Like I've never been bored by Vilgax. Uh, we got Siphon next, his... his loyal lackey. I, I'm gonna be honest, I did not give a single fuck about Siphon until Omniverse. Him trying to become his own like leader and villain in Omniverse, I thought was so funny because he was so bad at it. And I find him entertaining. He's kind of annoying, but in a funny way. I mean, I agree. Like I didn't dislike anything about UAF Siphon. I just did not care about him. Omniverse took that and like made him his own character. They didn't just say, oh, he's on his own now. Like his whole character is defined by the fact he's not Vilgax's lackey anymore and he's trying to find his own place in the world. I'd say average. Dagon. This is a gray area for me, because as some of our fans don't know, I have not ever watched all of Ultimate Alien. I've seen most of it. I haven't watched all of it though, so don't even do the fake. <laughs> What? No. Controversially, I have a very soft spot for the Esoterica versus Forever Knights arc. I know you haven't seen that arc. I think it's one of the best arcs in Ben 10 in terms of the concept. There's a lot of different layers to it, and it's like this big war going on between the Forever Knights and the Esoterica, and there's a lot of history between the both of them, and Ben's kind of trying to stop both of them from destroying the world. The episodes themselves and the execution, dare I say it, can be a little shaky. It's definitely not the most exciting finale or arc for that matter. I just really appreciate the lore. I very much enjoy Dagon, but they they botched his episodes pretty bad. I'm gonna have to put him in bad. Oh no, I'm fine with that. Enoch. Enoch. Okay, Enoch, he died after the original series, right? Or does he come back at some point? Because I he, vaguely He remember. comes back in Ultimate Alien 
to die. Oh, okay. But he's like, he doesn't have his same mask or anything, right? He's just a dude at that point. Might be thinking of Driscoll, which is also on this list, so we'll get to him. But in terms of Enoch, he was like the head honcho of the knights until the Forever King came in and was like, nope, it's me. And then an ultimate alien, Driscoll, the ex-plumber who joined the knights, who's behind the armor, he comes back without the armor. And yeah, he is kind of just like a dude. He, I don't remember him being horrible in the original series, but I don't remember like, aside from the dream episode, like many memorable moments with him that were actually like really cool. Yes, we got the negative 10 and Driscoll out of it, but like- The negative 10 pretty much had nothing to do with Enoch. Ah. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I just made Which the Forever Knight storyline itself. No, it did. No, it's 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 as strange as it sounds. That's literally what happened is Enoch is the main Forever Knight head honcho up until the very last two episodes. And then he just... I, I don't know. They fired him. <laughs> like, Dr yeah, basically, Driscoll's like, you can't do this. Be like, fuck you, I'm the villain now. I feel like seeing the word bad is so harsh. Like, I wish this was just labeled with letters. But I mean, in terms of the one through five ranking, I would put Enoch in bad. Now we got Hex, the master magician. Oh, they use the ultimate alien force art. I couldn't tell what character that was. Part of me really wants to say excellent for two reasons. One, I really like what happened to him in Omniverse, where he's like not really a villain anymore. He just kind of does his own thing. He's so suave. He's so fucking cool. And two, uh, because I want to say that he's excellent. <laughs> Rob. All right. Rob. He's excellent. He's excellent, isn't he? Yes. You know what? I was even, I was going to go far as to say he's an ultimate villain, but if you want the excellent just for the pun. <laughs> Some of his earlier stuff, it's not bad. It's just like, doesn't hype me up. I feel like for a villain to be an ultimate, it needs to be something that, I'm, that I can just be like, oh shit. Yeah, no, dude, if this guy's showing up, oh, things are going to go down. And like with Hex, I don't hit that kind of level, if that makes All sense. All right. Excellent's very fair. He's excellent. He's excellent. It all, it all worked out. On that topic, I feel like Charmcaster is pretty excellent too. Part of me wants to advocate for her being ultimate. I can't think of solid reasoning as to why, other than her being just kind of badass. See, I would say the reason she doesn't get ultimate is like Hex, she also had her own passive arc, but unlike Hex, it just fell flat towards the end. Starts going through this redemption arc. It's not even like out of left field, because ever since her first appearance, you can kind of get this inkling that she doesn't really want to be involved with Hex. She's still a little bit bonkers but like you know you can tell she's a complete product of the life she was brought up in and ultimate alien was really tackling her her measurement of morality and then omniverse was just like no she's crazy and like I liked it. I liked Omniverse. It's just a big tone shift from beginning at a redemption arc in Ultimate Alien just to say, nah, in Omniverse, that's what throws me off. A character development thing that was transforming her into a different archetype. It's just that the transition, the, the last bit of the transition for Charmcaster wasn't shown that well. Like, like Ben's personality shift from Alien Force 2 and 3. There is a canon reason, but that reason just isn't enough to make it feel okay as a viewer, like even if you like it, you can't deny it's, it's it's noticeable. Like it's like such a black and white transition. But with all that said, I still want to throw her an excellent. Yeah, go right ahead. Forever Knight, we kind of already talked about. He's like, I just feel like throw him in bad. The reason he doesn't get worse is just because I don't hate him. But like, he's just he doesn't have a lot to him. Yeah. Uh, Ad Wecha, maybe average. I don't know. He's neat. He seems like he would be a, a big threat. But the way they present him, from what I remember at least, he just kind of he comes across as like a Skeletor to me. He's goofy. Like I I can't take him serious half the time. So where are you thinking of throwing him then? I enjoyed him more than Dagon. I maybe average. Average is good okay zombozo I, I know a lot of people like him but i think he's kind of bad his one episode in classic was pretty dope because it was like literally season one ben 10 every succeeding appearance i was like where why is he still here i'm caught between average and bad i would say average i'll i'll throw him in average because i kind of really don't care but i was leaning more towards bad dr aloysius animo this is my favorite villain in all of ben 10 he is a villain that I feel like can mainly only exist in Ben 10 because he suits the universe so well. Ultimate is what I'm saying for Adamo. He's a consistent villain throughout all the franchise and he's entertaining as hell 
almost every time he shows up. I think he's better than Vilgax. I'm sorry. If Vilgax didn't have like the whole weirdness throughout all of his different versions, like he'd probably be ultimate. But yeah, that's one thing with Animo. He always feels like Animo. I'd say the only bad version of Animo I've ever seen is Devoid. I kind of like Devoid. Does he stay jacked after that? Yeah, he's jacked all the way through until the end of Ultimate Alien. In the beginning of an episode, he's like mind controlling a Yeti, right? Is he still jacked during that? What? Yeah, he's juiced, dude. You think putting that headband on the Yeti was an easy feat, dude? He had to fight that Yeti first. <laughs> yeah. So we got Rojo Jojo. Mm -hmm. Um... Rojo, I know that she shows up in Ultimate Alien Force. I don't know where she does. It's one episode. It's an opening. She's the guy that they catch Ben in the middle of the fight at the beginning of this episode just to open on an action piece. I want to say average. I like her character and I like her concept a lot. I would honestly say bad. Just like, again, not because I think she's bad. That's just literally what this category is labeled, but oh, she's yeah. really just not that great. Agrigor, another big divider in the fandom. I don't know like any fucking thing about him. The reasons I like Vilgax are the reasons I don't like Agrigor, if that makes sense. I feel like the biggest difference is Vilgax is just entertaining enough and intertwined with the Ben 10 lore. He doesn't really need to be a fully fleshed out character. He's great for what he is, whereas Agrigor is the same thing. He's the big bad for two seasons. He doesn't have much of a personality. He's kind of just speaking like stereotypical villain voodoo and all of that. Um, power, power, power and all that. Yeah, like Dagon, I enjoyed a story. That's one thing about Ultimate Alien. It had great stories, but just, you know, I, I feel like they were afraid to really go in strong directions with the characters since originally in Alien Force, they did that and then they were told to pull it back. So now I feel like they were just like, well, maybe we shouldn't flesh out our villains because we're just going to get told not to. I feel like I would throw them in average. I would say average because there are a lot of fans that do really like him. People always talk about Kevin's amalgam forms. No one ever talks about Aggregate is an album form. That was fucking Yo, that's cool. true. Like, no that's one's cool ever design. talking about Agrigor. <laughs> I'm the fusion man, and I don't talk about Amalgam Agrigor. Because it's a very cool design. The one thing about him, I feel like he could have a little bit more NRG in him, because he's just got the one it's strip. Just the, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna throw him up in average. Average gore. Albedo. Oh, okay. Okay. Albedo is stupid. Albedo <laughs> is a really dumb character, but I really like him. If I watch an episode with him in it, I'm gonna be yelling at him half the time that he's an idiot but he's very entertaining and i would say either excellent or ultimate i kind of agree with that my opinion with him is sort of in line with charmcaster where i felt like they were going through some passive arc with him and not quite the redemption but it's just like there was one episode where he does think he gets cured and then he's just like all right well see ya because he got what he wanted and then it reversed and it pushed him even more rageful so by the time omniverse comes around he's just nuts but you know what it doesn't even ruin it for me i just love albedo i love the idea of like a, an evil Ben sort of, but not quite a literal evil Ben. I love making up uh, albedo color schemes whenever we we draw aliens and whatnot. Dude, I do that for every transformation commission and ultimate I do now. Yeah, it's just fun. Give albedo an ultimate spot. He's just, he's great. The Vreedles. Okay, a another thing that people are gonna give me crap for, for not seeing all of Ultimate Alien, I didn't know the Vreedles show up before Omniverse. I thought they were an Omniverse original villains. I feel like I like them better in UAF. They had more of a distinct personality. The Octagon. His whole gimmick was he would talk in a southern drawl where he would just be speaking very intellectually, but with a very, like, uh, stereotypically unintelligent southern accent. And then Boyd really was sort of like... He's got that dumbness in him. Yeah. Yeah, but he's still pretty great. Omniverse sort of melded them together a little bit. They were harder to really tell their personalities apart. As a kid growing up, I'll admit I did not like them, but I feel like I very much come around to them now that I get what they were going for with it. Which is a big battle I always have. Like, does it matter what I think now or does it matter what I thought as a kid because I was the target audience then? Well, considering we're making the video now, <laughs> I'd say average, you know? I would say average. The Circus, Circus Trio. Freaks. All three of them? Oh no, I wanted to do this in individually because I really like Frightwig and I really like Acid Breath, but Thumb Skull's just kind of stupid to me. That's exactly how I feel. I just throw them in bad, keep it simple. Now we got the big tick. Does he, does the tick even count? I never saw it as a villain. It's just, it's a situation. I feel like we could put it in worse just because like, I didn't hate it, but I mean like, why is this on the list? The hybrid ultimate. They had the cleanest art. They were pretty balanced villains. Like they were strong. They could shoot the needles. I like that they would open up their chest and drink from the ground. That whole episode 
uh, on Terra Usa. I thought that was a really good character crafting thing for Ben, as well as the hybrid. They're just all around great. They get, they deserve ultimate. Yeah, that's fine. The Limax. Worst. Get him, get him, get him down there. If they would have came back, like they set up that they would. Now, Sublimino. I really just, I don't give a fuck about Sublimino. I just don't care about him at all. I don't either. He's going in the worst. Clancy. I like the gimmick of Clancy up till the negative 10. Is he supposed to be an alien or is he a mutant? I couldn't tell. The pop-up said Dr. Animo made him a bug sort of, <laughs> I guess, I don't know. I would say bad only because if they didn't turn him into a bug in the negative 10, it would have been a cool. Carl Nesmith, otherwise known as, what was it? I remember it sounded like a villain name. It's like Dr. Nemesis or something. Captain Nemesis. Captain Nemesis. He's, that sounds evil. He's so lame. I don't like him. You want to throw him in worst? Honestly, yes. Will Harang. The J. Jonah Jameson of Ben 10. Oh man, I gotta admit, I fucking love this guy. <laughs> yeah, I'd throw him in excellent. I'd be fine with that. The D and Aliens, I feel like they they don't really need to be here. Like they're kind of in line with the hybrid, but that doesn't mean I want to give them ultimate. I never saw them as a character. I just kind of saw them like how I saw Forever Knights for a little while, where it's just bodies being thrown at Ben to punch. They're just the grunts. I'd give them bad. They really don't need to be here. They're they're grunts. It'd be like if Volcanus's henchmen were on this list. Kevin, I feel like deserves ultimate just because it's pretty obvious. Hands like, down. We don't even need to debate on that. He's just, he's great. Oh, it's a scare. <laughs> Man, I wonder how you feel about Zaskare. Zaskare, I want to put an ultimate, but it feels more so right. But, uh, no, because motherfucker escaped the Omnitrix. I like Zaskare. He's a cool story within the Ben 10 franchise. Plus, he came back from the dead multiple times just to continue to fuck with Ben. But then it turns into like, I'm the goofy villain. <laughs> but it's still super fun. I would say ultimate because he's one of my favorite. I don't feel as passionate. I would have put him in excellent, but I, I can see him in being an ultimate. You know, he's such a big part of the Ben 10 lore. Frank, chill out. What are you doing? You see Frank? <laughs> this is what he does every time I'm streaming or doing something. He just weevils on my fucking bed. It's frolicking Frank. All right, we got the Halloween trio on here. First, we got Victor. I like him less and less every time I see him. I kind of want to throw him in the worst. As they were becoming more comedic with the franchise, look at his Omniverse artwork. They turned him into a nutcracker and gave him the German accent. Like, it, he became a joke. Sometimes, sometimes I love it when Omniverse leans into the, the goofiness. The best thing that came out of Omniverse in terms of characters, aside from Rook, was Blue Kitchen Dreba. They're the omniverse style humor done right but with victor here they didn't they didn't need to to give it that omniverse flair he they kind of ruined him in that regard it really sucks because in the galactic monsters mini art he has like some legitimately cool character development with oh i work for my master i'm loyal to him but he's trying to resurrect a species that like almost genocided me. Conflict, like th that was cool. That would have been so dope if he wasn't a big fluffy purple man. I I feel like sometimes, yeah, the goofiness really does delude the story a little bit. Like sometimes it embraces it, but in Victor's case, like, can we put him in bad instead of worst? Because like, think back to his original series, his big reveal. Uh, he was disguised as a human on earth for so True, but long. how do you even do that? Couldn't tell you. <laughs> All right, you know what? Like, I don't really care. We could throw him in bad. Okay. I just... Yeah, he he was he was kind of cool at the start. Same with the mummy. Like I really don't give a shit about the mummy, but yeah. he was animated very cool. Uh, I liked his little sh 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 the swishy sound effects. It was almost mystical. Same with the wolf, honestly, too. We could just chuck all these in bad. They didn't have characters. They were they were monsters. They that was that was it. Man, why the fuck is the road crew on here? What? Wait, <laughs> the worst. We're not even talking about. Yeah, it. no. Move, move on. past. Move past. Volcanus. <laughs> okay. I need bisynthium ore. <laughs> um, but he's one of those street level alien villains that just keeps showing up. And every time he does, I have a little smile on my face. Weak sauce, Tennyson. I would say average. All right, Crab. Um, he was a cool for the one episode. In Alien Force, they like- He's in Alien Force? Literally just like Rojo being an ultimate alien. He's just like the, the big action piece at the start of an episode. Oh, he's on the same level as Mummy and Wolf. Yeah, it's kind of like, eh. What does this arrow do? Oh shit. 
You move the entire. Oh fuck! You're moving Subliminal to the top of the list. What are you doing? <laughs> He's hypnotized me, man. I don't know. Oh, I'm organizing the tiers. Okay, all right. Uh, six six. If we're talking just straight up 6-6, six, six, I want to put him in excellent. Yeah, 6-6 six, six was pretty dope. He was very mysterious, but in the same regards of how people like Boba Fett so much, I never really got why people like Boba Fett so much, but because of 6-6, six, six, I now get that. What about 7-7? Seven, seven? Fuck him. Worst. Malware is pretty fucking dope. I would put him in ultimate. Uh, he's got a great arc. He's got a great design. He like literally destroyed feedback. You know what? Malware did have some pretty fucking cool and scary moments. I'd say ultimate. Ultimate works. Now, maltruant though. Eh, average at best. When I was doing the Alien X video, I was doing some research on maltruant. He only actually has like two real episodes where he shows up. He has like two or three episodes where he has a non-speaking cameo. But for like the final arc villain where everything leaves off, it's like, I feel like I don't even know him. It makes me sad he's the last villain of the show. Uh, although Mark Hamill voicing him, Mark Hamill. that pulls a little sway with me. I'd say average at least. Yeah. Kyber? I don't know. Oh, Kyber, Kyber. His episodes are in like the realm of episodes I rewatched the least. And there's a lot of villains I disliked as a kid, like the Breedles that I grew to, to come attached to. So I really don't know how I feel about Kyber. I want to say average. You don't get a lot of his character aside from, oh yes, I'm... I'm fucking scary. Yeah, average is average is good with me. Uh, Dr. Psychobos. I would say possibly putting him in average, and I do use the term loosely. Uh, you beat me to it. Serpent. Fuck that, worst. The only thing I like about Serpent is non-canon. There's this, I actually, I own these comics right here. There's this little uh, four issue art involving Serpent as the main villain. And I don't even really like him that much here. I just love these comics for those uh, that might know what I'm talking about. These are the, these are the comics where like he finds like this mermaid girl and there's like this whole underground society. It's got some pretty great storytelling. Look at how Ripjaws appears oh my in God, this comic. So cool. It's got some pretty, it's got some pretty good art. But I mean, this shit isn't even canon, so it doesn't count. He's a worst. Get him out of here. Who we got next? Sunder, who's I like being the gray funny. goblin. <laughs> I don't have much of an opinion on him. I only remember him in the episode in Alien Force where Ben gets his hand cut off. Yeah, I I kind of don't give a shit about him. I'd throw him in bad. Yeah. Kenko? Ooh. Kenko, I actually think is pretty fucking cool. Yeah, he made an impression with one episode. I would say average. What do these gears do? probably wait can you change the name of the tiers i'm clicking them and nothing's happening guess not supposed to happen but yeah nothing's happening all right we got the Tekadon Weapon Master. He was pretty neat too. I liked how he talked. I like how he had like a precision for everything. Can I put him in average? Oh yeah, go ahead. He's he's pretty cool. Argit. Dude, if you don't know what I'm going to put him as. Ultimate? Yes, man. Argit is fucking awesome. Come on, Robbie boy. You got you got to put I would give him excellent at best i don't know argent i just hate how he keeps fucking over the main team and i get like that's why he's a villain so to speak but like god he's such an asshole he becomes the president of the world i know and that's the most realistic thing about him i feel like i can only do excellent like because just look at the look at the ultimate category right now we got some big guys up there like i don't think argent can stand along with them. fine that's fine it's uh, understandable uh ragnarok i don't know a single thing about he's only in one episode right yeah he he shows up he's like kevin i killed your dad and then kevin throws him into the sun or something i don't know let's throw him in the worst now eon i have another soft spot for for two reasons one i am obsessed with time travel it is my absolute favorite concept even non-linear storytelling is in a sense time travel at least for the viewer and because you know he's the main villain of five years later so <laughs> i've been writing him for a bit uh but when it comes to the show itself he's kind kind of mediocre very very i hate that they retconned him into being an alternate ben i know a lot of people try to justify that that was implied in race against time what happened was the cronian eon succeeded in taking over ben transforming him into a cronian thus technically making him an alternate version of ben like i'm not even making that shit up watch the movie again in the canon itself of the show yes he's an alternate ben and i deeply deeply despise that wait so that is that is a fully confirmed thing or is it just like someone misinterpreted statement like in ultimate alien eon literally takes his helmet off and is just like i'm gonna be the only ben 10 in the universe or something that's
Nonetheless, I'd throw him in average just because, like, you know, yeah. he's still kind of cool. I like how Omniverse gives him a rivalry with Paradox. Kind of like, you know, the doctor, the master relationship. Uh, who is that? Simeon? Man, they should have killed him in Alien Force. Lord Emperor Light of the Incursion Empire, Keeper of the Destruction Ray. Da -da 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 -da. Conquest Ray. Conquest Ray. Fuck. You yeah, all all people, all all frogs tremble in his presence or whatever. I don't know. I would say excellent. Excellent. Yes. Here's the thing, because I see Atea's coming right up next. I would say Milius average, Atea excellent. I would say Milius excellent, Atea ultimate. Really? You think Atea can stand next to Malware, the Scare, Hybrid, Ultimate Kevin, Albedo, Dr. Animo? Yes. <sighs> I mean, she does overthrow the Incursion Empire twice, technically, and becomes like, you know, the dictator of a giant space army. She's pretty fucking powerful in the position that she's in. So I will say I'll give Atea ultimate, but I still feel like Milius, I just want to throw him an average. Yeah, that, like, that's Like, he's fine. funny that's and fine. all, but... That's fine. No, we got Conduit Edwards. Don't even know who the fuck that is. I'm assuming he's an Esoterica, though. Yeah, so he's the leader of Ben 10's version of Scientology, oh. except Twist, they're actually right. Right? Sort of? <laughs> Conduit Edwards specifically. If we're talking about the Esoterica, that's one thing, but I mean him? Eh, worst. Cervantes. Cervantes had a great arc. He probably had the second, if not the best arc in Omniverse, at least in my opinion. He's cunning. He's got a great power. He's got a great design. I like how he's not like, you know, at the forefront. He's kind of pulling the strings. His whole thing is manipulating people and playing the world like a chess game. That like his whole thing is he wants to take down Ben because he thinks Ben is is incredibly irresponsible with his power and needs to be stopped. Cervantes isn't after fame, glory, power. He's just literally like, this kid is nuts and we have to stop him. In his mind, he could, he's like not even being evil. He's, it's just mm -hmm. his beliefs. I think he's ultimate. It was me, Kevin. Elena. Oh, that's the, the nanite girl, right? I liked her in the movies when she was played by Alyssa Diaz. I forgot who plays her in the show. You know something actually? So she was voiced in Ultimate Alien by a person Person named Tia Texada, and the way they draw her in Ultimate Alien looks like the voice actress. But in Omniverse, they try to make her look like Alyssa Diaz again. But either way, I don't know. I feel like I wasn't feeling her in the show. Like she's bad. Blue forearms. I don't know anything about him other than that. <laughs> yeah, you know, here's my thing about Kolar. I like him simply because of the fact that he's blue and everyone's always up in arms about why is he blue? Well, get this. Have you ever looked around the human race and seen all of the different colors we are? Like what if there's literally just blue Tetramans out there and that's just how it is? Why is that weird? That's how I feel about it. And I feel like, you know, diversifying the races of aliens, even through color is something that we really should have gotten even more. I don't think Kolar needs to be a mutant or experience or any of that shit because he's blue. I just think Tetramans are sometimes blue. That's my opinion. Honestly, I could get that too. It, it kind of expands the, the lore of the universe and of Koros uh, specifically, the Tetraman. And he's got a better design than UA forearms. <laughs> Much. Put him in average just because he's got a sweet design. Yeah, that's fair. Lord Transil. Honestly, I don't like him. Thank you. I don't either. I really don't. He's <laughs> lame. Put him in worst because he was not the villain of that arc. The scare was. Lord Transil was just a device that he was using. Yeah, Lord Transil's pretty whack. Hi, Mochi. I'll get Frank. I'll do the same thing. We got Mizaru. I don't know who that is. That's fine. Fuck this guy. Worst. Moving on. Uh, Slicks Vigma. I actually really like Slicks Vigma. Yeah, Slicks is pretty cool. I put him in average. Yeah, average. Uh, how about Phil? Okay, Phil, in the original series, I thought he was a total asshole. In Omniverse, when he comes back, they do make him a little, I would say, conceptually goofy with the fact he can turn into, is it Tarantula? Yeah, because, uh, Kyber tries using Phil as a conduit for the Nematrix, and it gets screwed up, and now he can always transform into Tarantula. I would say a high average. I'd put him in average. Yeah, average is fine. It's it's hard to use the mouse while I got a holder. We got the Synthoid or something. Synthroid. Don't know what that is. Uh, Terminator ripoff. One episode, Ultimate Alien. Worst. Any one-off villains, unless they were really funny, I don't care about. What about Trumbipular? Trumbipular. Hell yeah. He at least goes in bad. Uh, in bad at least. Because I find him funny. Oh, wait. Can I change the names here? Can, can you? Can I edit that? I can. Oh my, you've been able to the whole time? I don't care enough anymore. Morg. Morg? Didn't he die? No, I think he's still alive. Do you know about Quarrel? Oh, he's the one that killed Quarrel, right? Yeah, he killed Quarrel. He's a dick. Put him in worse. Oh, yeah, all right. You're 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 a jerk and not in an entertaining way, Morg. The uh, Lenopins. The big fat alien wedding Lenopins, right? Yeah, the blobby, the blobby purples. <laughs> what did you just say? 
<laughs> the, uh, the, yeah, the, the, the ploppy purples. Oh no. Did they die? Apparently there was a deleted scene where it showed the plumbers arresting them. As the statue? Yeah, or something like that. I don't know. But like, you know, just because there's deleted scenes doesn't mean they're canon. So who really knows? That's just, that, that makes me think of like someone walks up to a murder scene and a cop starts handcuffing a dead body. I would say put him in worse. Now, Prisoner 775, who unfortunately never gets a name. Did you see this one? I did see this one. Him, I remember being very tragic. He was. Now it's like, are we ranking them as villains or as characters? Because as a villain, I would say worse just because he's not a villain at all. He like got thrown in jail for 50 years and his family died. He, he was a casualty of war. He did try to kill Colonel Rosen, but I mean... They locked him in prison for 90 years. He's not a villain. The episode ends with him crying and trying to get Ben to kill him. I really wish he wasn't even on this list. I'm not gonna rank him. He doesn't deserve that. 8-8. Eight, eight. Put 8-8 eight, eight in the worst. <laughs> Thank you. Now, Ma Friedel. I've never seen the Ultimate Alien Force art of her. You know something? Derek did that too. Did what? He designed Ma Vredel in Ultimate Alien. Oh, Ma Vredel is very funny. She's definitely a villain. I would say average though, only because like she's a gag. I, I'd give her that, yeah. She's an entertaining character. The things I don't like about her is like how overfluffed she is. Like she can send Vilgax running. For those that don't know my personal theory, and it's the only way I can rationalize it, is the reason why Vilgax is scared of Ma Vredel is because she's his ex. Oh yeah. Yeah, like that's that's the only way it makes sense to me. Other than that, that's just too damn goofy. She's all right. I'd, I'd put her in average. The last one, Michael Morningstar, also known as Dark Star. He's cool as hell. He's a total fucking asshole, but like he's a really good villain. Like he does some pretty treacherous shit and keeps doing it consistently. Plus they have some good gags with him every now and then just to kind of like keep him balanced. I feel like he kind of has the Argent relationship a little bit too, where there are times where he's an ally, but he's still just, you know, he's evil. When it comes down to it, he was like draining people's lives and whatnot. I'm, I'm throwing him an ultimate. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm down with that. So we got our final list right here. How do you feel about these rankings? I fully agree with all of the ultimate rankings. I, I think those are the most entertaining villains throughout the show. Vilgax, I really wish that we could have ranked him higher. Really excellent. And some of the, uh, the top of the average ones, I just thought they were more so cool and entertaining characters and that's why the rank's so high no yeah i agree like i feel like we're i'm, I'm gonna get a lot of flack for putting kolar so high but it's like he's cool yeah he's cool I, you know whatever i haven't even seen his episode and i give more of a fuck about him than i do enoch or driscoll that's all it right. all the villains that's it that sounds good. Thank you all for checking out this video. Uh, again, if you want to do your own tier list, link's going to be in the description. Let us know what you think about our opinions down in the comments. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let us know why. You know, it's all about discussion. Uh, but yeah, hope you have a great rest of your weekend. And as always, keep it fizzy.